Can you use Delta as the probability for an option being in the money at expiration? And if you know anything about me, you already know the answer. It depends because it really does depend. It's not a blanket answer. And a lot of people don't know that. So the goal of this video is to walk through even why we can use Delta as an approximation of an option being in the money, but then also some of the math behind it so that you can be smarter on how these things work. And then at the end of the video, I want to walk you through the exact scenarios where it does work and then it doesn't work because sometimes you have to apply different approach to get an accurate answer. So with that, what's up everyone? Everybody. Welcome back to all the outliers and a shout out to the Patreon family. Let's get straight to business. So Delta as a probability, we are going to start with a practical application for you guys. Let's take a look here at NVIDIA and we're going to look at this 15 December 2 DTE options chain. And then my editor will be kind enough to help you guys see and follow along with what I'm talking about. Right here, we can see the Delta for this 480 put. The Delta here is 44. So traditional approach then would say that we have a 44% chance of this option expiring in the money at expiration. I guess expiring in the money and then at ex kind of duplicative, whatever. Expiring in the money at expiration, making sure you know that it's at expiration. And if we take a look at the probability that's calculated by the Thinkorswim platform, this is showing me 44.55. It's moving around right now because markets are still moving a little bit. They're closed, but volatility still changes. So anyways, that's what you're seeing. This is very close, right? This is saying now 43 and it's 44. It's within a point, very close tolerance. Okay, cool. So then it sounds like it works, right? Why is this the case? And then what was I talking about at the beginning of the video when I said, well, it doesn't always work. Well, let's take a step over to everybody's favorite. I'm actually pretty sure this is universally accepted that everybody really loves my handwriting. A load of shit. So where would I be without sharing? Look at that. I even got to the point where I had to crunch some of this in. So my awful handwriting got even nice. worse, if you can even believe that. Tough for me to believe, but I'll walk you through it. Don't worry. You don't have to know this information in depth. I just want to show you why this works so that you have a better understanding. And if you like this side of trading, I have a video called Introduction to Options where I dive deep into things like the Black-Scholes formula. Well, really Black-Scholes-Merton model, but the formula that the using Black Shell's model so that you can better understand these things. But it's just a differential equation with some different inputs. That's the punchline, okay? That means absolutely nothing to you as it should, because if it did, that means you probably have as little of a life as I do, and you don't actually want to know what this means. But here's a key for you down here. Again, we don't have to go through it. It doesn't really matter. I just want to highlight a few things to you. First, I am going to explain to you what D1 is. So right here is where I break out D1 so that you can see what goes into D1. This matters for a particular reason. Why would it matter, you might think? Because fun fact, I don't know if you can use the term fun fact when you're talking about this kind of stuff, but I'm gonna do it anyways because I think it's fun. Boom, that's delta. ND1 is delta. So this is how we are calculating the delta of an option. Now it is important to note that N in this context, N of X, is a cumulative density function. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. You don't really have to know what it means, but you can simply think of it as a distribution of a real variable. So in this case, for D1, I am gonna walk you through the inputs because the inputs here matter to us. Here we have the log normal distribution of the stock price divided by the strike price plus the risk-free rate plus the annual standard deviation of volatility squared divided by two multiplied by time. And in this case, time is as a percentage of a year. And then that's gonna be divided by the annualized standard deviation of volatility square root of time. Okay, why does this matter? Well, I'm gonna show you, but before that, because I have OCD, there's D2 in case we're wondering. You're probably over there thinking like, what the hell is the cumulative density function of this one? Well, that's D2, fun fact. Okay. But why does it actually matter? Well, let's take a look at how we calculate the probability of an option being in the money. You take the normal distribution of the log normal function of strike divided by stock price. All of that's divided by volatility times the square root of DTE over 365. So in this case, T, right? 
is DT is a percentage of a year. That's exactly what we're doing here. So if you notice the denominator in this case is the exact same thing. So then if you look at the numerator, you see that this is slightly different, slightly different. Here we're adding a couple additional components like the risk-free rate, annual standard deviation of volatility. This is to get delta because remember, delta has a different purpose of probability of being in the money. This matters. So because of this, let's now take a look at when this does and does not work because in this example, it worked beautifully, right? We have the 43 delta and it's 44% probability. Now let's go out to something that's 37 DTE. This is 45 delta for the 480 put and that's 48.6% probability of being in the money. What do you notice? If it's not clear yet, let me zoom out even more. Let's go to this 19 April 128 DTE. I'm gonna look at this 42 delta 480 put. I'm just taking essentially the first out of the money put. The 42 delta out of the money put now has a 42% probability according to delta, but according to the option, it's 50.74% as calculated by thinkorswim. So what do you notice? Ideally, you notice something that's pretty clear at this point. What's happening is the further out in time you go, the less accurate delta is. Very important for you to know that if you trade anything essentially that's over 90 DTE, because if we go back to this example, this is 42 DTE, this is 50, that's an eight point variance, eight, almost nine point variance. If you're trading something where your outcome can have nine points of slack in potential outcome, one, good on you, because that means you have found an insanely, insanely effective edge, but most of us don't have that. The difference of a 9% probability here is pretty massive, and I keep growing it, I realized, but yeah, it's this is essentially, and this is only 192 days out, or 128 days out, there goes dyslexia. So what I'm highlighting though is the further you go out in time, the less accurate delta is as your approximation. Now, for those curious on how this all works, I bring you the gift of math. Oh. Hell no. Let me close this up so it's easier for you to follow along. You can essentially do a side by side with me. And I'll zoom this in for those that are visually impaired. I know that I have a decent amount of my audience that's above 60. So you guys might need your uh, your fancy two tone shades. Make sure you're not in the sun. Otherwise, it'll be too dark. And let's take a look. I took the current figures, so 48088 for NVIDIA, and here are the parameters we need. We need the stock price, days to expiration. You get to pick whatever option you're looking at. So in this case, I'm looking at a put and a call. I'm looking at the 480 put, the 485 call. Then I'm gonna grab the implied volatility for both of those options. So the put IV in this instance is 33.3%. The call IV is 32.42%. You'll have to trust me because it's covered right now. And let's take a look at the outputs. For the put, this is calculating the probability of in the money being 49.31%. Thinkorswim is calculating it at 48.63%. And the delta is calculating it at 45%. All slight differences because Thinkorswim is gonna apply their proprietary formulas for most of these things. So that's why it is a slight deviation from this, but you should notice one thing. We are much closer to what Thinkorswim is calculating in this instance than delta is. Same thing for the call side. So how do you calculate these? I'll highlight these real quick so that you can grab the formulas, but it's literally just grabbing the formulas that I just showed you guys. But this, for those that look at that and their eyes gloss over, here's literally what you could just grab from Google Sheets or Excel. It's the same thing. Now, I will say before people start dropping in, saying like, oh my God, the normal distribution function's not working. If you use something like Google Sheets, there are a lot of them, right? So there's normal distributions for sample, normal distribution for populations. So in this case, you want to use the standard normal distribution function so norm.s.dist and then in excel it's slightly different but you'll be able to figure it out hopefully if not don't do this and probably don't trade so be an outlier see you guys later